I'm glad you're all here. So, dear Vice President Juliane Winkelmann, thank you for coming and thanks for speaking tonight. Dear Marina, dear Farok, he's on the taxi, but he's here in a minute. Dear Francis, you don't have to write such a long speech. Don't worry. Be, just, just say a few words. It's really not a problem. Dear friends, colleagues, students, I'm very happy to welcome you tonight for the exhibition opening Marina Tabassum Architects in Bangladesh at the Architecture Museum of Technical University, Munich. The idea for this exhibition started exactly two years ago, three years ago, sorry, three years ago when Marina Tabassum came to Munich to give a lecture on the occasion of the exhibition on by Krishna Doshi, who unfortunately just passed away last week. Her presentation on the extreme conditions for planning and building in Bangladesh and her design responses deeply impressed us and fascinated. We wanted to learn more and stayed in contact to develop the exhibition idea. I sincerely believe that it's now a perfect moment for a major presentation of her work because her work grew in the last years very much and you will see it in the exhibition in very important dimension. Marina de Basson's spectrum of architectural work is broad. It reaches from residential buildings to mosques and self-building, self-built housing projects. Her design project concepts are often based on elementary geometric forms playing with volume, light, and shadow. And specifically in her mosque projects, Marina Tabassum developed a timeless language beyond all popular cliches of mosques, and she creates mystic atmospheres. On the other end of the spectrum, we can find simple building modules designed for the lowest income in Bangladesh. The tiny houses called Kudibari, you will see it in the exhibition, can easily be assembled, transported, and also expanded. Marina Tabassum's buildings contribute strongly to what has been called the vibrant architecture scene of Bangladesh. That was an exhibition in Basel. But I had the great opportunity to travel with Simone Bade, the curator of the exhibition, and Marina Tabassum and her team in September last year to see a lot of her buildings on site and to understand better the relation between her design approach and the outcome. What struck me personally most is the, not only the connection of each design with the cultural and social conditions in each place, it is the strong engagement of Marina Tabassum herself as she is using design as an instrument for social change. To give you one example, the women-led community center that she just finished is placed in one of the largest refugee camps in the world, Cox Bazar. 800,000 and more refugees from Myanmar, the Rohingya, living there. The design for this women-led community center was developed together with the Rohingya refugees and it is really an outcome that you see makes a huge difference within the camp. We all know architects cannot change politics but they can take responsibility for the victims of political decisions. It's a great privilege for us that she presents her first museum exhibition ever here in Munich and I'm deeply convinced that Marina Tabassum's work is based not only on local knowledge and traditions, but it's exemplary on a global scale. Let me close with some thanks. First of all, very personally for Marina, for all the support for this exhibition, for the travel, for sending us many of her team to make this show happen. Many thanks to PIN, Freunde der Pinakothek der Moderne, for the generous support and more thanks to the Freundeskreis des Architekturmuseums. And as always, my deepest gratitude goes to the Technical University that allows us the academic, the academic freedom of planning exhibitions like this. Now I give the podium to Juliane Winkelmann. Thank you very much.
Ja, dir Professor Tabassum, dir Professor Lepig, dir Professor Kere, dir Mr. Derakshani, dir uh, Dr. Bada, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really delighted to welcome you all tonight to Marina Tabassum's Architecture in Bangladesh exhibition, organized by the Architecture Museum of the Technical University of Munich. And I cordially like to welcome you, Marina Tabasso, and your team to Munich. <clears throat> In the last decade, the People's Republic of Bangladesh has produced a new wave of cultural architecture. The country's modern buildings, with influences from the Bengal region and the Indian subcontinent, stand right next to monuments that are thousands of years old. And here, Marina Tabassum established a contemporary architectural language that connects to the history and traditions of Bangladesh. With other words, Marina Tabassum has realized projects in which she harmonized the principles of modern architecture with local culture, traditions, local resources, material, and nature. With a very tight budget and in packed neighborhoods, she refrains from all extravagances. She's particularly known for her elemental and at the same time profound architecture to improve the lives of low-income people in Bangladesh, where all of her projects are based. But one, what I'm impressed most is that beyond all her research and all her construction work and her teaching, and I learned you teach a lot, you're just uh, coming from or flying to the University of Toronto, so that's really a lot. She is very powerful in transforming social activity. So her vision of architecture is much broader than just profit-oriented. She is involved, as you've heard, in the refugee camp in Bangladesh, where more than 1.2 million Rohingya refugees from Myanmar live. But she even organizes opportunities for the handicraft education. In her project, she really wants to include all people and also engage the community in the process of building to make them responsible for their environment. In, in front of the Pinakothek and here in the exhibition, you, there's one of her lightweight houses made of local material on stilts that can be moved when the water rises. So these easily dismantled houses are sold at markets in Bangladesh. So the people living in the river delta, they can move their houses when the floods rise. 80% of the country is just above the sea level. So many of the 107 uh, mil million inhabitants are already severely affected by global climate change. And to find solutions for our societal challenges on a global scale and on an, uh, as an international technical university, we as a university, we collaborate with international institutions, the best and most innovative institution of higher education in the world. And we also at the same time want to attract the best minds to our university and to, Uni to Munich. So currently we have more than 50,000 students at our university. Um, more than 40% are international students. The same is true for our faculty. About one third is from abroad and 161 students are from Bangladesh. So I think we have the brightest minds here from Bangladesh and I do hope they feel home at our university and also in Munich. 
Dear Marina, I'm very grateful, finally, that we have met in person today. Um, I remember in 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic, we met for the first time on Zoom. And I had the honor to award you the honorary doctorate from the Technical University of Munich in recognition. <laughs> in recognition of your independent and sustainable architectural work of significant social value. And today I found out that in the pandemic she just got the copy of the certificate. <laughs> she never got the real uh, document. So what a wonderful opportunity today to give you and hand over um, the certificate of uh, the Dr. Ingenieur Ehrenhalber of the Technical University Munich. Congratulations again. <laughs> No, sorry, we don't have the hat, but I'm very happy that uh, I can hand over this to you. So thank you very much and enjoy this very inspiring exhibition. Thank you very much. Hello, hello. So, welcome to everybody. Um, I have prepared a text, but I cannot read. Actually, it came back from a doctor who tried to widen my eyes to be able to see inside. So, after one hour presentation with my student, um, I fought to be able to read. I cannot, but that is good. So, um, give me the opportunity to just be free. So, welcome to all of you. Uh, this is the second time that I'm here in this house addressing a speech. The first time, it was about myself. Um, I had a very first exhibition here in this house. It, it was a lot more pressure than uh, today. Um, so, but the second time, it's a great honor to be here because it is for you, dear Marina. Um, and uh, as I know, this is your very first exhibition at all. And this happening to, in, in Munich, in the Pinacothek of the Modern, where I also had my very meaningful monographic exhibition. It's a fantastic place. So for me, it's an honor to be able to welcome you here in this house, which belong to our university. So. You are, from now, part of our family. And, and so, I mean, the two of us, we're sharing many, many things. You know, one thing that we do in common is trying to use our skills, our profession, to serve community to care for communities and that we have in common. And this being, we have become a member of a great family. You also are a kind of award winner, like myself. So I want to congratulate you for that again, because I was, um, I was honored almost uh, 22 years ago. It was in 2004. No, 18 years ago that I got the Aga Khan. So the two of us, we belong to another family, a family that has dedicated um, herself to a world project like ours that normally people don't know about in the West. Um, I have to say that this award helped pave my career as well as the exhibition I had here in this house. So um, 
this being, I like to highlight the fact that that kind of exhibitions here are a catalyst, you know, to introduce that kind of work that we're doing that normally plays no role in traditional way of showing exhibitions. Um, and so I have to be honest to say I'm happy that we are connected to Andres, who first time exhibited um, my work in, at MoMA, it, it was 2008. Is that correct? Ten. Ten. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was small scale, a big change. So the work we're doing, you know, has a meaning, you know. We providing architecture to people that normally are underserved. Of course, we like to do it if they give us the opportunity, even bigger. We can't do that because we are architect. So I see we have a lot of connections, and I don't want to talk too much as to say thank you to the Pinacotech, the Moderna, and Andres to give us that opportunity. And something that I'm happy today about is also that Farok has joined us. I hope he will have a goal to talk about your architecture. For me, I wanted to say the importance, the relevance of that kind of exhibition and to push the Pinacotech de Moderna to give more means and free more capacity to have that kind of exhibitions happen. You know, the exhibition I did here helped introduce my work to in, in Germany and to the, a broader audience, and it helped to bring me to the university in Berlin, uh, in Munich. So thank you very much and welcome you again. Thank you. Hello. Um, first, I have to say something small because I think uh, Francis went to a wrong doctor. You should not have gone to the ophthalmologist because the first time that you spoke here was when I spoke here before you and then you went down and started jumping and saying things in German I didn't understand but everybody was clapping for him. So I envy you that. Just um, It's a great honor to be here, especially that <coughs> as the Arc and Award for Architecture that I've been uh, associated with for the past 40 years, we look for people, both people who are known and both people who are less known. Uh, we had the privilege of giving awards to Fry Otto, uh, Professor Gutbrot, and in the early days. And these were important architects who were showing new ways to do things in, at their time. But at the same time, we've been able to find other people, other projects that we have been uh, um, very, uh, how do you say, uh, thankful to them, that they made good examples for others to learn. One of the most important things in architecture is how can you learn from others' experience? And if you cannot share that experience with the others, that is not good because you can do a very good project, but if you cannot share that project with others, that's a pity. I really think, I mean, uh, the, one of, this is one of the mo main uh, roles of the museums who create these opportunities and create places not only to do uh, projects for specialists, but to show them to people at large. Um, for example, as you mentioned, uh, Director, that outside there is a building which uh, it was built, they can buy it in, um, in the market in Bangladesh, but they didn't forget to say that if IKEA know, knew that such a thing happens, today we would have solved a lot of problems all over the world, having prefab houses that you could buy from IKEA and buy, build it for much less money than it is today. That's what, what I'm saying this because this is where the intelligence comes from. Innovation and intelligence is not something which is only comes from one part of the world. It's something which is a combination. It's a co something which one learns by doing that, by talking to the others, um, sharing the experiences, and we as the Archon Award for Architecture, we've been lucky to be able to have a role in these years. Uh, amongst here, for friends we are here, as you said, uh, Francis, a family, we've got Anna Herringer, we've got Eike Roswag, and we've got many others, and I hope there'll be more architects that's gonna join this family. Thank you very much.
Well, I didn't prepare any speech. <laughs> uh, it's, um, it's absolutely overwhelming for me, uh, you know, um, to be here. This is the first ever exhibition of our work. I've been in practice for 28 years. Um, first in a partnership, later on I started my own office. And um, uh, so the ex exhibition here speaks for itself. Um, uh, so I basically uh, do not want to spend much time talking about it or our work. I have a lot of people to thank for um, you know, bringing all of this together. So um, I will start. And if I, if I miss anybody, please uh, do not, <laughs> I mean, forgive me. Um, so with the exhibition, as I, uh, you know, first of all, I think I should definitely start by saying that, you know, the, the reason I came to Munich um, in 2020 in January, that was absolutely at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, starting of the pandemic, we just were hearing something of a d disease going on in China. We had no idea that that will probably, you know, cripple us for the next two, two and a half, three years. Um, and that was uh, because of the Balkrishna Doshi exhibition. And, um, you know, he is an immensely important person. He's an elder of our subcontinent. And I'm really very, very sad and sorry for the fact that, you know, I, I'm here because of his exhibition, because of him, and he's not here with us. So, you know, my deepest condolences and my respect to him. Um, you know, I've, I've, I saw him last in October. Uh, he was just um, uh, recovering from COVID, but I suppose he never really recovered. So, you know, it's, uh, it's with a lot of sadness I remember him. Um, so to start with the, you know, when Andres basically uh, invited us to do this exhibition, and um, I just recently heard that, you know, this is probably the second monographic exhibition that he has ever um, allowed. <laughs> A lot of people has um, approached him, but uh, so it's an absolute honor for me to, to be represented here, um, representing my office and not just my office, but in the process, representing my entire country. Um, so, uh, so thank you, Andres, uh, for this opportunity. And to Simone, Father, she took this uh, uh, this whole uh, you know uh, the responsibility of curating this show. Um, you know, uh, Simone has curated several shows. I think two monographic. Um, one was Lina Bobardi, but uh, she was not alive. I'm the only live person, <laughs> so I hope I was not too difficult <laughs> to deal with. But yeah, so when we accepted this whole um, uh, exhibition, uh, you know, since we've never done an exhibition before, we were very naive and we said, yes, why not? Who knew that there was so much of work, actually? It's a lot of work. Um, and, and it's a 28 years of work that we had to compile, getting all the drawings, images, um, everything. So, and then, you know, I, I have a very young team in the office. Um, uh, we are a very small team that we work together and everybody was excited. We were overboard with a lot of ambition. You'll see the model speaks for themselves, <laughs> how, um, you know, dedicatedly they work. Um, it's, it's sad that I cannot have everybody uh, here today. I wish I could bring all of them, um, but they have all worked so hard. I mean, whatever we have presented here, or even my projects, uh, it's not a one-person job. It's a full team's work. So, you know, the dedication and the passion that I have always had of all the architects who has worked with me, you know, this wouldn't have been possible without their support and their... Uh, you know, their respect that they have for me. So I really thank all of them uh, from the bottom of my heart uh, for supporting me for 20 years, eight years or so. Um, <laughs> so um, a lot of people to thank from the university side for those who has actually helped us in, uh, in, the, um, in setting up this exhibition. I think there's a lot uh, of people who actually helped us uh, from Germany 
And as I said, since this is a very new uh, experience for us, we were not the most experienced. <laughs> We've done a lot of things uh, not right, but they were all very patient and wonderful, uh, very generous um, in, 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 in helping us uh, with the exhibition. So for the exhibition, uh, along with my team, here I had uh, Arman Abidin and Masood, uh, who is a carpenter who was here, who built those, the house outside. Uh, Arman and uh, Sharia was also here um, doing the exhibition with, um, with the team uh, from, uh, uh, um, from the museum, Andreas Bowman, Volker Enders, Andreas Familia, Tony Heine, wonderful people. Um, they've been one very generous and helped us uh, with the whole process. Uh, we had Asif Salman, who was also here photographing and documenting the whole process. So thank you, Asif, for being there. Uh, Tilo, I really, really thank <laughs> Tilo Schuster for being so patient with us, uh, with all the shipment and everything. So thank you. And from Bangladesh side, we had Prokriti who helped us with the shipment. So uh, also a lot of thanks goes to them. We have um, not here, but um, the graphic design done by um, Tonmoy or Ittez Amin. Uh, so all the work of the graphic design was done by him, so thanks to um, Ittez Amin. Uh, the photography and the films that we have, also from Asif Salman, City Syntex, Apple Box, all Bangladeshis um, who actually were generously helping us um, in putting up. The, an exhibition is nothing um, if we just have models and images. Uh, doesn't really give us the whole spectrum of a country or a place. So we were always constantly trying, how can we bring Bangladesh here? And so um, all the work that you see uh, tries to give that context. And since our project is always a response to the context, we tried to bring it in, so through films or through installations. Um, so, um, so I really thank um, them for making the beautiful films. Um, Martin, uh, who did the steel work for the Venice uh, Biennale installation, Wisdom of the Land. We had wonderful students uh, from TUM and the assistants uh, who actually did the mud floor, uh, which was actually also Martin Rauk. I must thank him, special thanks to Martin. Wonderful friend, and every time we have some mud issues, we always reach out to Martin, so he's not here, but uh, please thank him, Anna, for me. <laughs> Okay, um, and then there are so many other, I mean, lots of friends who came, flew in from all different places, Norway, uh, Geneva, <laughs> and um, where else, um, yeah, Portugal, um, London. So I have a lot of people who really are great uh, friends and supporters. I really thank you for being here and everybody else who's here. Um, thank you all, and I really hope that you enjoy the show. And it's not just about an architect's work, but it's also about the country. Um, you know, quite often Bangladesh comes to news because of flooding or some sort of climatic disasters or some um, issues uh, which are not so positive in a way. What we try to bring to you is the positive, uh, the richness of the culture and the the resilience of the people who live in a, in a much uh, difficult uh, geographical and climatic situations, um, but the negotiation and the adaptation that people have and they have endurance, I think, I hope that it really showcases that. I don't know if I'm forgetting anybody. Thank you for the, <laughs> uh, for the doctoral degree. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's wonderful to get that. Um, uh, finally, the... Uh, the certificate, I'll hang it nicely in my office. <laughs> um, so thank you all for being here. I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. If I have, please forgive me. Thank you so much. So I will say some words in German, last words, and I will be fast. <laughs> Ähm, ich möchte noch ein paar Sätze zur Ausstellung sagen. Ähm, was mich an Marina Tabassums Arbeit besonders imponiert ist, 
dass sie sich mit Themen auseinandersetzt, die mehr als aktuell sind. Die Flüchtlingskrise, die Klimaveränderung und die Frage nach kultureller und gesellschaftlicher Zugehörigkeit. Sie agiert hier völlig ohne Berührungsängste, ganz im Gegenteil. Sie schaut ganz genau hin, begibt sich an die Orte, arbeitet mit den Menschen zusammen, packt an und versucht so herauszufinden, wirklich zu erforschen, was die Bedürfnisse und die Ausgangsbedingungen der Menschen sind. Aufgrund dieses bewussten Umgangs mit dem Kontext habe ich es damals für sinnvoll gehalten, die Ausstellung topografisch zu gliedern. Wir beginnen also im ersten Raum äh, mit verschiedenen Projekten, die wir vorstellen, die auf dem Land entstanden sind, dort, wo Menschen und Natur noch symbiotisch miteinander leben. Die Projekte zeugen davon, dass sie sehr eng mit der traditionellen Kultur der Beschaffenheit des Bodens, der fruchtbaren Landschaft und der einfachen Lebensweise der Menschen verbunden sind. Im zweiten Raum zeigen wir die Projekte, die an der Peripherie von Dhaka, Bangladeschs Megametropole, entstanden sind. Hier leben die Menschen in eher planlosen Siedlungen, in denen die Gemeinschaft aber noch eine wesentliche Rolle spielt. Die Beit ur ruf moschee ist in dieser Umgebung errichtet worden, wahrscheinlich ihr bekanntestes Projekt, das 2016 den Aga Khan Award ähm, erhalten hat. Es ist ein Werk, das für seine Einfachheit und Klarheit steht und für Marinas Umgang mit Licht, das eine spirituelle Erfahrung möglich macht. Hier möchte ich hervorheben, dass es das Freimachen von so vielen idealen und gängigen Vorstellungen ist, das ich bewundere. Freimachen von der traditionellen Moschee-Ikonografie, genauso wie das Freimachen von der stets innerenden Frage, wie die Architektur Bangladeschs nach der Unabhängigkeit eigentlich aussehen soll. Lokal, global, modern, traditionell. Marina Tabassum lässt diese Fragen hinter sich und schöpft aus dem reichen Pool an unterschiedlichen kulturellen Erfahrungen und macht diese in ihrem Werk zugänglich. Im letzten Raum werden Sie alle Projekte sehen, die in Dakas Stadtzentrum realisiert wurden. Es handelt sich meist um Wohnhochhäuser, die auf repräsentative Ansprüche genauso wie auf ökonomischen Druck reagieren. Damit zeigt sie die Bandbreite ihres Werkes, das nicht einer einzigen Kategorie zugeordnet werden kann. Sie ist eine sozial engagierte Architektin, aber auch eine Architektin der großen Bauaufgaben. Für Marina und mich war von Anfang an klar, dass diese Strukturen und diese Erzählstrang in die Gestaltung und in die Art der Ausstellung einfließen soll durch große begehbare Installationen, die ihre Architektur nicht nur vermitteln, sondern die Atmosphäre, die Stimmung und den Ausdruck erfahrbar machen. Dazu tragen die vielen aus unterschiedlichen Materialien bestehenden Modelle ebenfalls bei, die mit viel Liebe zum Detail von ihrem Büro hergestellt wurden. Die großformatigen Fotos und die vielen Filme geben zusätzlich einen Eindruck von dem gesamten Kontext und ihrer Heimat Bangladesch. Was die Ausstellung sicherlich besonders macht und dies auch für mich, ist letztlich die Zusammenarbeit von vielen, von den Mitarbeiterinnen ihres Büros wie den Mitarbeiterinnen des Architekturmuseums und sie erzählt in ihren Feinheiten sicherlich auch die Geschichte von dem Zusammentreffen zweier völlig unterschiedlicher Kulturen, durch das es beiderseits viele, viele Überraschungen gab, wie zum Beispiel bei der Einholung der Genehmigung für den Aufbau des im Eingangsbereich des Museums stehenden Doha-Hauses ähm, und den damit verbundenen Anordnungen von Schutzmaßnahmen. Überraschend war hier vor allem die Regelungen, Vorschriften, Sicherheitsbedenken, an die sich das gesamte Büro von Marina ähm, erst einmal gewöhnen musste. Und wir wir mussten auf der anderen Seite immer wieder aufs Neue lernen, dass ein finaler Plan nicht unbedingt final sein muss, sondern es sehr viele spontane Änderungen geben kann. Jeder Mitarbeiter brachte bis ganz zum Schluss noch Koffer voller Modelle mit nach München, die in den letzten Wochen noch entstanden sind. Ich möchte mich am Ende daher in aller Kürze bei ähm, allen ähm, an der Verwirklichung der Ausstellung Beteiligten bedanken, für die bestimmt unvergessliche Zusammenarbeit. Es war gewiss eine einmalige Erfahrung. Bedank, besonders bedanken möchte ich mich daher bei Arman, thank you so much, and Shahira, Masud und Asif, die uns, zu uns gekommen sind, 
und einen Monat lang mit Toni, Andreas, Volker und Andreas bei uns gearbeitet haben. Tausend Dank euch. Thank you so much for coming to, 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 to Munich. Uh, it was such a pleasure um, to work with you. My, bei Marina möchte ich mich für ihr Vertrauen bedanken und uh, über Wochen und, uh, und über den uh, langen Austausch, der über Wochen und Monate ging. Thank you so much, Marina. It was a really a very great exchange. Und zu guter Letzt möchte ich mich bei, bei Andres Lepik bedanken, um, der mir in den letzten zehn Jahren neben vielen anderen auch diese außerordentlich spannende Aufgabe übertragen hat und ja, vielen, vielen herzlichen Dank, André. Es ist, war tolle zehn Jahre auf jeden Fall. It's, it's, it's really the last working day for Simone after 10 years. I can't. It's I, I don't know where we are going without her. Really, I don't know. Thank you so much. Thanks for saying that. We have one speaker who is not on the list, and uh, Dr. Brauch, if you come up, he's the General Honorar Consul von Bangladesh, der mir versprochen hat, nur in zwei Sätzen noch etwas zu sagen, und dann werden wir gleich die Ausstellung eröffnen. Herr Dr. Brauch. As already announced, don't be afraid, this will not be a speech. I, I just wanted to express why I'm so pleased to be here. I am now Honorary Consul General for Bangladesh in Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg since 23 years. And normally when you speak about Bangladesh, you are confronted with people saying about terrible things going on there, natural and other disasters and whatever. So it's only bad news. And as Marina Tabasa has already mentioned, uh, we are, and I am very pleased if there are good news coming from Bangladesh and good people, and of course there are a lot of good people, but she is a brilliant person, and I'm very pleased that she is at the origin of the good news, and I hope that you will all bring back in the back of your mind that not only disasters are happening there, but also good things, and I'm pleased that Marina Tabassel, he is the origin of one of these positive things. Thank you. <laughs> and my last thanks goes to Mr. Lepig that he has organized this exhibition and I'm very pleased that we're here. Thank you. So before I let you all go into the exhibition, I have to ask first, the, the team also of Marina to come up here to the podium so that you all see who has done the work in the back. As, as if and everyone come, come here, I just want to show and also the colleagues from FACE, please come here, come all up here. Come up. I know it was too cold for you. I, I'm, I, I'm sure you will be glad to be back. I, I would love to come with you. <laughs> so, uh, before you go into the exhibition, a last organizational request, please, you can't enter with, with big backpacks or bags or coats, so please l let them down in the cloakroom. We cannot enter this. The security system is here very strict, so please allow that. And as not all of you can enter the exhibition at the same moment because we don't have so much space, so there is a little bit wine and water in the back, so you can decide now either the exhibition or the wine, and have a great evening. Thank you all for coming. See you soon.